Are we back on screen, screen yet, perfect. guys? You're back on screen. You look yes. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. First and foremost, how have you been? I'm. I've been okay. Um. Yeah. I would say okay. I like to answer the question honestly. I I haven't been like ten out of ten by any means, but I've been okay. How yeah. About yeah. I've been pretty good, honestly. Okay, I'll be more on I'll be honest as well. Um, super effing stressed with immigration stuff, but mm -hmm. it looks like it's all um going swimmingly. And after basically this weekend and into next week, we should have a really great news that everything has gone through and I am allowed to stay and everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hopefully, yeah. yes. That would be yes. good. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, they rejected my first swing around application um, because they don't recognize my job as a real one because ah. I'm a 1099 worker. So we went a different route. And like that part cracks me up where I'm like, oh, do I am I not making money now? Am I? Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> like, I don't make money. Do I have to pay tax? Just kidding. Yeah. I'll pay tax. But like it is um, going well now that everything's kind of a little bit better. But otherwise, everything's been great. And this is my first collab since I've moved. Wow. Well, I'm yeah. I, I'm pretty excited. So, okay. <laughs> I have to tell you something. The other day, I watched the collab you did with Alex and Destiny and Grace and everybody. And I'm more of a shit fling fest than a collab, but yeah, you know, honestly, but Alex did, you know, awful. it was like, it was like, do it was do it was a thing. And I listened yep. to everything up until the point that you basically left Destiny's stream uh, when I think Darius or somebody came on or something. Q, Q came on. Q, like, I'm good. Q, sorry. Oh. So, the same to me. so, okay. So I was listening and I was like, oh my gosh, my Kyla bubble popped. Mm-hmm. And That's the good. category, yeah, it was interesting. The category of person I had you in, I had to switch my narrative and be like, oh, I thought Kyla was this category of person, but Kyla's this category of person. And I wanted to explore that with you. Of course, please let me know if I cross any boundaries and do not burn the bridge on me or leave me. Because, <laughs> like, I don't want to upset anybody. But I kind of want to ask, like, a few hard questions, but also I just want to have, like, a conversation, not a debate. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess I'm super curious. So how did you view me before and how do you view me now? Okay, so I'm going to use, like, Britney language, but, like, I'll translate it, of course. So I grew up religious-religious, meaning religious in how I saw the world and religious how I expected the world to be. So how I voted, how I acted, how I judged people. And then I viewed you that way until, until that debate, and then I realized, like, oh, I consider you, Britney's terms here, secular religious, meaning you hold two points, one for thee and one for not for thee. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which I would argue most religious people should, but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm listening to you and I'm going through okay. and like everything that I've been, Kyla, you don't understand the last few months, I have been like, why is Kyla doing this? And why is Kyla doing this? And why is Kyla doing this? And then I was like, oh my gosh, it all came together. Do you know what you had been doing the last few months that threw me and made me so confused? No, I have no idea. <laughs> Bro, I was like, why is Kyla liking my OF posts. <laughs> Why is she like you? I was like, I just want to support my friends. I just always support my friends. Which I'm honored by. And I even told my partner, I was like, Kyla is either like the coolest Christian in the world, slash like a hippie Christian, or she's very confused on whether or not she's a Christian. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm so confused what's happening. So then I heard this debate or discussion and I was like, okay, wait a second. Kyla does have this ability to know what she needs for herself and then to allow the world to kind of do their thing, which reminds me a little bit about how people get upset with me, where they're like, mm -hmm. Brittany, what do you think is good for the world? I'm like, are you asking me, Brittany, what I think is good for me or what I think is good for literally 8 billion people? Are you asking me, yeah. Brittany, the voter that wants to give people rights or me, Brittany, the weird like black and white thinker that like yeah. has strict rules in my own life? So I wanted to ask you. Like, how did you come to this place in your relationship with religion? Because I swear, correct me if I'm wrong, when we first met, were you not more religious? Nope. I would say that, I would say I've been pretty consistent. This has been my worldview forever. Um, the unfortunate thing is I don't think I've ever verbally walked through anybody from bottom to top until that stream. So like, really? I think the worst part of that stream was A, I'm dealing with BPF who is like, constantly lying and constantly just like Andrew trying yeah 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 okay, okay he's just very very bad faith right yeah um and I'm trying to explain like a worldview that I didn't think was that weird because if you go to like European Catholics for example oh. or most like Orthodox Jewish people mm -hmm. what I'm describing isn't that weird 
mm-hmm. but I, I guess maybe I've been out of like dealing with like super dogmatic Protestants and forgetting mm. that a lot of atheists grew up in dogmatic Protestant yes. homes yes. and rejected it because of how dogmatic it was. Yes. And they were like mad at me of being like, well, you can't be like this because yeah. if I were like you, this is why I rejected faith. And I was like, right. So like, I've been like, I've had like so many atheists DMing me so angry. They're like, this is not how Christians can be. And I was like, yeah. why would you even? Here, you think I believe in the troll under the bridge? Like, why are you even <laughs> telling me what I do? It's been really, it's been such yeah. a weird experience. I've actually had like two different PhDs in theology reach out to me and be like, here's some language to like clean up what you're explaining, mm. but like nothing you're saying is actually crazy. Like, this is pretty standard in a lot of theological interpretations of the Bible. Um, I just messed up with a bit of my like philosophy word swapping, mm. uh, which I think confused a lot of people. And also, Almost everything I say is going to be very oppositional to like if you grew up in the Bible Belt or anywhere mm-hmm. where like you have fundamentalist Protestants who are sola scriptura and um, biblical deconstructivist, uh, mm-hmm. deconstructionist. Um, everything I'm saying sounds heretical to you, even though what I'm saying is actually pretty standard within like the Catholic tradition, for example. That's okay. This is what's interesting because okay, I'll be super again. Please, my God, stop being. Don't be. My, don't stop being my friend. Okay. I feel like I'm like nervous about this all the time now. But listen, I am one of those former Catholics that was like, yeah. is Kyla a cafeteria Christian? Is Kyla like a lukewarm Christian? Is Kyla like, yeah. what is she doing? Because right. I was raised in like a super like you vote. You deny your own children legal rights if they're gay. Right. Like my parents can't come mm-hmm. to my wedding because it's a secular wedding. Right. Like my family can't come who's religious. Right. So when I think. When I and to be honest with you, I I think I don't know. Again, I'm pretty black and white in my own like ideas of like it either is or isn't. So for mm-hmm. me in my head, I'm thinking like if you believe in God, I like if I believed in God again, I would I feel like I'd be like a fiery like I'd be like so diligent and so like on top of it because that's mm-hmm. how I was when I was practicing. But I do wonder how do you have a ca- forgive my French casual relationship with God because it does sound sort of casual. Yeah. So I think what happened for a lot of people is they feel like I'm dog whistling at like limp wristed progressive Christianism that just is like, oh, like God's my friend and he loves you and he loves me yeah. and like that's it. And like, what's the Bible really anyways, mm-hmm. which is actually not at all how I engage with my faith. Okay. Um, in North America, I would say any assumption you're going to have about how I'm engaging with my faith is probably incorrect because I reject almost all of the Protestant framework. If you're a European uh, with Catholic heritage and you've been like pretty theologically like backed in your uh, Catholicism, what I'm saying is going to be like make way more sense. Mm. So I'm not limp wristed. I know my theology really well. In fact, my biggest issue is I don't know how Protestants have come to the conclusions that they have mm. um, because what happened is I started like really reading the book. I started like reading religious scholars. I started reading secular scholars. I started like looking into like the time and place of the culture and like when certain things were written. And there was like, there was just no way that I could read the Bible the way that I had been raised as a fundamentalist read, which is Mm. like to read the Bible as this like didactic science book, which is not how it's written. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So I understand why people feel like I'm like this weak progressive. I'm willing to call things that are wrong, but number one, there's a whole bunch of reasons as to why religious sects have different standards for religious and non-religious people. This is quite standard in almost all Abrahamic religions. In fact, Protestants are weird that they don't often do this, right? Mm. Even Islamic people tend to have different standards for Muslim people versus non-Muslim people. Um, this is a very common practice in Abrahamic religions. Mm-hmm. So I can absolutely say what is potentially a sin for me isn't for you because sin is if you look biblically, the biggest thing that we can like tell from sin, Romans 14 is like a really good example. Like Paul just like mm. breaks it down actually really well. It's very much about what you know. So if you do an action that you genuinely believe to be good but, yeah. and you're not kidding yourself, right? If you're lying right. to yourself, you're like a little sneaky party that's like, this is probably a bad idea. That, that could be a sin. Right. But if you genuinely believe what you're doing, you've done the work to ensure that it is and you do that action, essentially they say it's not a sin. Right. Even mm. in the case, of, think about when Jesus was killed. He said, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. Essentially, right. like 
fully covering them because they had no idea, even though they were killing the literal son of God, like arguably yeah. like kind of a, one of the most awful things you could do religiously. Yeah. Um, and yet their lack of knowledge um, kind of protected them. This is why, I don't know if you're familiar with this. So um, there's a practice within Catholicism to talk as minimal as possible about blaspheming the Holy Spirit mm. the sin, because it's considered the unforgivable sin. But if you don't know what it is, you can't commit it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of Catholics, like a lot of teachers will be very cautious in like teaching you what it means to blaspheme the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. So this is a really big issue because Protestants try to say, here's Protestants' approach, right? Protestants reconcile this by saying, non-Christians do know what they're doing is sin. They're just lying to themselves. Mm. There's a little part of them. Whereas what I am saying is, I believe them that they don't know. I believe yeah. them that they fully disagree with my religion and therefore whatever my sins are, they genuinely disagree with, mm -hmm. which means mm -hmm. that they're not as accountable to those things. So that's kind of the gap that's going on for Protestants. Protestants would say, all non-Christian people are lying. You know my God is right. You're just in rebellion. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm saying, I'm quoting the actual Bible. I'm saying, what does the Bible say? Uh, they cannot see their hearts are hard. They do not know things like that. That's what yeah. I'm believing. About. When they say, I disagree, I don't believe this. I believe them because I think that that's biblical. For sure. It's interesting. I grew up Roman Catholic specifically. I do have some family that's Orthodox, like from Iraq Catholic. So they don't follow the Pope, but I don't really understand any of that. And when I grew up Roman Catholic, it was a very specific relationship with it because we also practiced it. It was weird the bubble that we were in. It was like a typical church, but also like Latin mass sometimes. And like even Latin mass now, my parents are more into the Latin. They're going really hardcore into it. But for me, I was taught like we don't go door to door, right? That's like not a Catholic thing. Like we're not interested in going door to door. But we kind of vote aggressively through the faith and we act aggressively through the faith. And we do if the conversation co comes up. I was always taught to make it clear to people like – it is a sin if you know it's a sin, but it's also not even a sin. You're just moving further from Christ. So like one of the things that I thought was interesting in your conversation is you said something like you're not sure if Len of the plug and their actions were moving people further from Christ. But I like as a Catholic growing up and I'm an atheist now, but like as a Catholic, I was taught like that would be saying like my only fans is moving people further from Christ. That's how I was taught to think about it. What do you think about right. that? I think the issue is that like, Here's the reality. Can non-Christians do sin? Yes. Mm. Right? And that would be them doing things that they know to be wrong and doing it anyways. Right? Just like most mm. Christians. Because what I think sin is fundamentally is it's mostly intention. Right? This is where like um, the Sermon on the Mount is really interesting. Because what he lists there is like, you know, it's heard said to you that murder is a sin. But I say if you hate your brother, which biblically, when you look at the word hate, like the Greek word for it, it mostly yeah. just means very strong dislike like it's just a feeling so it's actually a much more simple mm. thing that you've already committed murder in your heart yeah right? yeah so he says you know it says do not commit adultery but i say the moment that you look lustfully at another woman you've committed yes adultery in your heart yes so when you see jesus he actually tightens the line of sin to like intention because it, mm. if you look biblically the most important thing that is outlined regularly particularly with the new covenant which for those who are not like religious the new covenant is essentially jesus before they had like the sacrificial altar and blood was put over it by the lambs and goats and pigs mm -hmm. and all that sort of shit. Um, not, never pigs actually, but goats and ox and stuff like that. The new covenant is when Jesus died. There's like this idea that his, like he was a sacrificial lamb, which means that his like blood is now placed over the altar, but it's like perfect. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it's like a new covenant that we have. Um, that's why it's called the New Testament. If you look at the New Testament particularly, you see constant conversations about the concerns about the heart of people. Mm. Um, and so when we say like moving away from God, if somebody doesn't even believe in God, the concern of them doing simple like actions that move them further away from God, it feels like it's like if every, if essentially, if spiritually you view this, in, if this individual is spiritually dead, right? They don't mm. believe in God. Why would I be concerned about like a dead person, like doing further sins or whatever like it, it's just so empty that's like such yeah. a meaning so i guess like theoretically you could be like yeah it's a sin but also like it's literally the least important thing because like until like sanctifying grace has occurred until their like salvation has been like enacted in that person mm -hmm. it's just not it's not really important 
um, like in any way, um, yeah. at least. Okay. I'm curious then. Um, okay. There is this question that gets brought up when these kinds of conversations happen. And I think the guys who talked to you on um, the second stream after the collab, I think they kind of brought it up. I think what people are concerned about is that they're wondering how do you hold two contradictory beliefs, but also how do you say you want to move, move people in one direction while allowing them to exist in their own? And I think that coincides with my idea of like humans going to human. I have to first radically accept that people do not share my beliefs or knowledge of the world and mm-hmm. that they will act in a way that I think is immoral, but they don't even process it as immoral. And then I have to then process that I have to make a decision. Do I want to move them towards my direction of thinking? But then I have to ask myself, why do I think I know the direction of thinking? So that's something I'm always in conflict with. And I think one of the things that people weren't sure about your beliefs is like, do you want to move people towards Christ or do you want to give people the freedom to find them on find him on their own? And you're just having a relationship with Christ. Uh, I suppose it depends on what you mean by move people towards Christ. Mm, mm, mm. Uh this is a, literally a fight we have on my Discord all the time because I'm always like, I don't want people to be like me. Just like do your thing. But obviously, I like I'm not sure if the world was like me, it'd be better. But I'm I like the way I am in the world. And I think if I was religious, I would want to move people towards Christ, meaning being actively a representation, a role model and encourage like a, a shoulder to cry on. Like I'd want to be active, I think. Right, that- so. Yeah, it depends, right? So uh, I notice SW. So SW in your chat is clearly like a soul of scripture, a Protestant. I'm mm. guessing. So he's probably going to be evangelical as well. Meaning, like, mm. like you said, she's never shared the gospel. So he believes that you have to tell people about the gospel. Uh, I said yes. I think that shit's cringe in 2023, right? Like, I think moving people towards Christ has to really vary depending on like the social context. That's why, mm. like, and I don't know how you would come to this conclusion in any other world. Like, Paul literally went to like Greeks and said, all your gods that you're talking about, they're based, they're fine, they're whatever. Yeah. But let me tell you, one statue called the nameless God. Yeah, I know yeah, his yeah. name and he's the best God. Okay. So we didn't tell them that all their other gods were silly and crap or anything right. like that. He worked within, I think he even explicitly says to the Romans, I've become like the Romans, right? He talks mm. about this like meeting people. This is why I really emphasize people reading like Romans 14, for example. Yeah. He goes through things like, if you believe in eating the meat, they're talking about like eating a sacrificial meat, which was very mm-hmm. a bad tradition uh, historically for the Jewish people. He says, if you do not believe that the meat is unclean, then it's not unclean, right? To those, that, it says, to those that are clean, all things are clean. To those that are unclean, all things are unclean. It's mm-hmm. very much about this perception of how you view it is going to change it. So going back to evangelism, I don't really believe that the way in 2023 to evangelize is to be like, hey, Brittany, have you heard about the Lord Jesus forever? (laughs) Because everyone's answer is yes and fuck off, right? That's everyone's answer because I would say that people have been doing bad evangelism for a really long time. Yeah. Um, And so moving people towards Christ, first of all, I'm not so presumptuous as to assume my role in evangelism other than like doing what I think is called in me, like trying my best to work on my relationship with God. Mm. If that leads people to wanting to ask Christians, I very clear always that I'm Christian. So I think that's the best form of evangelism I can do is being like, I'm a Christian and I'm not super fucking cringe. Right. Yeah. And if people want to ask me questions, I'm always happy to talk to you about it, but I'm not a teacher. I could yeah. be wrong you can dismiss anything that I'm saying. And like, that's the best way that I can see that people will receive it now. Um, so do I want to move people towards Christ? I guess sort of like I want to live a life that's good enough that people go, maybe Christians aren't awful. That would be mm. good, right? Because mm-hmm. I believe in like, I believe in my God. I believe yeah. that my God would be good for everyone to like have a relationship with. But I think the way that I do that is totally different than the way like Protestants are like obsessive about like, you know, you just got to like sit down and be like, do you know your A's, B's and C's? And it's just like, yeah. I'm just yeah. it's not about that. It's interesting because I definitely come from a worldview where every religious person I was meeting at the time was basically very staunchly religious and passionate and ready to convert and ready to lecture and ready to do those things, which is annoying. But there is something about it that's kind of amazing because you're like, damn, you really believe like you hardcore believe. And then to be honest with you, Mm -hmm. I am uncomfortable around like 
like gay Christian churches and like churches that are like just just demol- demolish the religion. Like my brain is always like just destroy the religion. Don't reform it because when you reform it, you're kind of saying it was never real in the first place. But then I wonder after hearing you, like how do you make peace with that idea that like how many times do we reform the religion before we're just really admitting it's a construct? Or do you think you are actually preaching the very the more honest version of the religion? To be clear, I always try to say this. If I'm wrong about my religion, then I'm a Sadducee, right? So like I could be a heretic. So like I really try to emphasize to people, I'm not a teacher. I'm not pretending to be a teacher. I don't want the spiritual responsibility being a teacher. I will answer your questions about what I think. Perfect. Um, uh, Sorry, hold on. Now I've just forgotten. Now that I've given that disclaimer, I just forgot your question. What was your question? Hold on. Let me think of how I worded it. (laughs) Hold on. What was my question? It was so good. It was such a good question. It was, it was, uh, oh, okay. So, okay. So when I see the really staunch religious people, like they must really believe when I see people who kind of reform churches and change rules and add in the gays. Yes. Like, do we, what are we doing there? Are we admitting it's a construct so we can change it? Or we, or do you think, cause the way you talk makes me think you think that you might even have the more honest way of viewing the Bible and the teachings. So obviously I think my way of engaging with the Bible is more correct. Otherwise I like wouldn't believe in it. Of course. Um, yeah. While saying, yeah, I could be wrong. Um, I believe if you actually look through like the Old Testament, for example, all you see is reform all the time. If you look through the New Testament, all you see is reform all the time. And then Protestants came along at some point and part like canonized the Bible and said sola scriptura and mm-hmm. just stopped it. But like even Catholics are revising it all the time. They're not Mm. revising like the core structure of it, right? Like any Catholic will say like, not to get it too much into Catholic like history and theology, but essentially like the core of the faith is the same because God is God. Yeah. But the issue is that to understand what, because like my view is essentially whatever God says is good is good. Mm. Mm. So God doesn't do what is good. Goodness comes because God says it is, right? And I would believe that essentially the world at Orient did that. And usually God has a lot of reasons for why he says things. Mm-hmm. But there was ceremonial law that we don't follow anymore. We eat pigs. We wear linen and cloth. So why? Is that just because like God was like, oh, JKs, it turns out I was silly <laughs> all along. And pigs are like, pigs are like, okay now. Is yeah. that what is that what God did? Did you just forget? He's like, oh, I forgot. Like I, I forgot to update my email. No. Yeah. I, what we see is like constant reformation. If you actually go into like the way like ancient Hebrews engaged with like the Old Testament, like Tanakh and Torah, it's really interesting because if you actually go to like the cultural context, there's this is where actually the Pharisaic and Sadduceic like lines of like thinking somewhat come out of is there's mm-hmm. like different camps, typically a more progressive camp and a more traditional camp, always worrying about the interpretations of the books in context of the culture that they like live within, right? And so um, this is actually why there's a verse where Jesus is getting grilled by the Pharisees and they're asking him about divorce. Mm. Uh, He says, you've heard Moses say to you, you know, uh, you can divorce your wife, but I say this. And he changes it. He actually says the Mosaic law was wrong because your hearts were hard. Mm. So Jesus literally goes, the old Testament was wrong here. It no longer applies. This is now the new law because your hearts were hard in the past. You couldn't understand it, but now you do. Right. And the Mosaic law was like very, it gave men a lot of like leeway to kind of like dump their wives more easily than I think you should. Mm -hmm. And what he was actually referring to, if you like get into the cultural context, if you go into the Mosaic law, you go back to the book that they're talking about and you actually look at the writings that were around that time, there are two interpretations of divorce and the Pharisees were specifically saying, which camp do you agree with? And Jesus Mm -hmm. basically said, fuck you kind of neither. (laughs) Like that's basically what he said. Um, And so it's like, when we're talking about reform, reform should always be happening because like, the book isn't didactic. You're not supposed to read it and go, women should not wear men's clothes. It says that, I think it's in Deuteronomy probably. Mm. There you go. Forever and always is now immoral for men yeah. and women to swap clothes. No. If you actually yeah. look at the cultural context of when that was written, there was a pagan worship group that a whole bunch of Hebrewic people were like falling prey to. And part of their form of worshiping their pagan God was to swap clothes and have like sexual orgies in the changed clothes and rolls. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And a large mo- like element of the ceremonial law that existed in Deuteronomy was to help the Hebrew people like be separate from yeah. the groups and religions. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah. 
that doesn't mean that it applies to us now. We don't have a pagan group. Like, unless you have to establish that, I guess, like transgenderism is a religion, then maybe you could make that argument, right? There's lots of ways mm -hmm. you interpret this. But it's not, God doesn't work in like, you cannot do X action. It seems like God works in like principles and systems. And our job as Christians is like, try to figure out what God wants in relation to like what he shared. Like, I think the Bible is the authority. Like you go back to that, but mm. you don't take the Bible didactically and go, well, because Paul said this to the Roman church at the, like the Roman people, yeah. not the Roman church, because it wasn't established yet, to the Roman like group that he was writing to in Romans or to the Corinthians, because he said this expressly, that means it's now the rule always. Otherwise, no Christian woman should be wearing earrings or yeah. uncovering her hair. But yeah. most Christians are fine with this. So it seems pretty clear that almost all Protestants do what I do. They just like lie about it for some reason. I don't mm. really understand why. It's interesting. Um, okay, you you brought up the Moses thing. There's a story out of Moses that I think, and this is again in my specific little Catholic bubble that I grew up in, like Catholics don't refer to the Bible as law, right? Because like it's flawed and it needs to be updated sometimes, but it is a book that is important. The yes. way I was taught about it, right? So, like, that, there's a part about Moses' story that my mom always, like, would talk about or we talk about in, like, if we took a theology class or something, like, we'd all talk about this concept of when Moses was away and he came back and he saw that people had, like, built idols and I think Aaron, right, was his, was Aaron? Is that the right name? I have, it's been a really long time since I've been Catholic. But, like, they had basically moved so far from God, created idols and, like, been so corrupt with everything that Moses, instead of kind of putting his foot down allowed sort of corruption to even filter in through his judgment, which brought about some of these like descriptions or disagreements on like a divorce or how to handle your marriages or how to handle your life. And so I have this like, again, I don't know how true this is because it's been so long since I've been in religion, but I think about that in modern day religion. Are we so weak in our convictions, secular or religious, that we're allowing people a soft landing into or out of their sin, into their religion and out of sin? You know, when do we, how hard do we hold people accountable? Right. And I think that super varies, right? Like, because mm. there's a moral question here, but I actually think this isn't a moral question. This is an interpersonal question, right? Mm. Because like, again, if like m my belief is like, God is good, but he has separate tenets. And like, my job is to try as best as I can to be like Jesus. And I'm going to fall and fail all the time, but right. I'm going to do my best to do so anyways. Right. Um, I have to like look at varying situations of sin and go, well, like what would be the appropriate response here? And realizing I'm not Jesus, right? So mm. there are certain things that like Jesus could potentially say that like, I better be really careful about saying because like, I'm certainly not without my flaws. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think this is really tough. This is why like Romans 14 is the one I keep pointing back to for this. Like it says like things like, uh, I'm looking in here like, 14 one says, accept the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's mm. faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. So this one is actually saying that the mature Christian realizes that food consumption doesn't really matter anymore. But a weaker Christian is still stuck on like didactic black and white laws. You don't like need to necessarily like shit on them. So like maybe that's where I'm wrong because I kind of shown Protestants for like essentially mm. still like only eating vegetables, right? The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God mm. has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servant, stand or fall. And they will stand... Uh, for the Lord is able to make them stand. So essentially, like when I, as an individual, am trying to decide if somebody's actions are right or wrong, do I believe in like some level of like moral objectivism? Yes. The problem is the moral ob object, which means like uh, there is like a capital T true. Mm -hmm. God knows. And I don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My job is to try as best as I can to figure out what it is, which means I'm necessarily morally relative. So what I do typically when I'm engaging is I use kind of like th four ways of judging people's moral character. Number one, what do they believe? Like, what, what does this person think? Because if you're doing an action, like if Brittany, you do something that I know Brittany thinks is wrong, well, I think you've done something immoral. Mm. So you believe it to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. Second son, set is what is your belief system? Because sometimes people cope, right? They'll be like, no, I think this is right. But if you actually look at like what you broadly profess, you're like, nah, you're a hypocrite, right? This is like the hypocrite stance. So mm -hmm. somebody's being a hypocrite would also be willing to say you're immoral. 
The third standard I hold people by typically is the society that they exist within, right? Mm. So is it reasonable to conclude that their society would go, yeah, this is broadly okay. It doesn't have to be all the society because all society doesn't agree. Is it reasonable looking at the society that they're in for them to think that this action is like right or wrong? And then fourth, after that, if I find like their society is like essentially like lacking or like dissatisfying, then I would compare their societal standards to mine. Mm. Um, and I might still be willing to weigh them. So this is why, for example, like the Aztec question of like baby sacrifice, is it wrong if they believe it's okay, their mm-hmm. personal belief system believes it's okay, and their societal standard? It's like, well, first of all, assuming their society isn't fucking lying to themselves, which I'm dubious of, to be honest. I'm dubious that as they're like carving out hearts, they're like, this is awesome. I don't know if I agree all this, but maybe that is. I'm still willing to hold them by my society standards being like, I don't think it's reasonable to conclude that a society works well and is better functioning. Uh, I think Mm -hmm. my society is right here. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's typically how I like judge people. So of course it's necessarily relative, but that doesn't mean that an objective doesn't exist. And that doesn't mean that we like can't work towards trying to find that. Well, okay. Before I get to these ones, I will say one of the things that I do believe and we talk a lot about on my channel is like, I do think there is like this big T truth out there in the universe that humans can't comprehend. Um, But maybe one day, maybe that big T truth is known by a god and maybe that big T truth is just known by this like aliens <laughs> like or an even non-existent thing like maybe there just is a truth and we nobody knows it no living yeah, creature has like a relationship some, like, with it quantum who knows yeah, yeah, who yeah. knows but you know it's like when two people have a conversation like somebody knows what really happened okay but like i'm not sure that yeah. the two people involved do i'm curious um Because, like, obviously, I'm seeking this, like, great big T truth knowing I'll never find it, right? I'm seeking wisdom even though I'll probably die before I get it. I'm seeking all the things that are hard because the journey itself is really the point, right? Like, that's kind of the – so it's like you don't want to be – like, realistically, you won't be a saint on earth. You'll be a saint when you die and go to heaven. But, like, what does that mean, right? You're just doing this journey. There's something you said that I thought was interesting and stood out to me as well with the debate with Andrew – Um, I feel like he was trying to use those four points almost to sort of judge um, people in his community and whether or not they were representatives of his community. Like, I think he brought up Lauren Southern and he had this weird, like, desire to know something about her, which if she was a normal person, I'm like, that's none of your business. Why do you want to know that? But as a public figure, and it doesn't matter, like, Lauren's not the point, right? It's the people who are public figures. Do we as a community, depending on if you belong to it or not, or even maybe if you're the opposing people. Do we or are we owed the truth about people's hypocrisy if they preach one thing and then do another? Like, do, how do you come to a conclusion in that regard? Because, again, I grew up super Catholic and, like, we're not happy the Pope is moving pedophiles around or, like, people are moving or, but you know, we don't appreciate. A lot of feelings about the Pope right now, I know. Okay, we don't have a lot of, we don't love that. So, like, because it's upsetting. So, like, how do, how do you, because that part of the conversation confused me a little bit. It felt like. You didn't understand what why Andrew needed to know that, but also it felt like, well, that makes sense. She's like a public figure. If she wants to be a private figure, then that's nobody nobody's business her life, right? It doesn't matter what she ate for dinner. It doesn't matter what she does. But if you're a public conservative, should you not be following conservative values? Issue of why we were making fun of BPF specifically is because it was in tandem to him saying – Hey guys, nothing's personal here. I oh, just yeah. enjoyed no, he myself, was... which is a lie. <sighs> you're totally. fucking lying because you're a yeah. little gossip. So what started this <laughs> is that he said all these things are like, you know, nothing's personal. And it's like, what do you mean, dude? You grilled me for like an hour, like not an hour. You grilled me for multiple minutes about the nature of my relationship. Mm. Like, of course it's personal. That's inherently personal, right? Mm. So I think like Destiny just like laughed and was like, come on, that's fucking bullshit. Is Uh, it personal? I will push back on this a little bit, right? Because I feel like as public figures, I'm not sure what's personal if it's content. This is where I I get confused. Both, right? It's both Uh, personal and it's content, right? Like people who make vlogs with their family are choosing to make their personal lives content. But the issue is like, so does that mean that because you're making your personal life content, you get to have like no boundaries with the no, public and not, you right? can't say like, right, of course not. And so it's like of in the not. case of Lauren Southern, it sounds like essentially what's happening is Desi's being like, I'm not really talking about this relationship. Totally right? fair. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, I like for whatever reason that he has decided that that's like the line that he's drawing. And of so course. the issue for why. Which by like the way laughing. is consistent with Destiny by the way. He's old. Yes. As long as I've known him he doesn't tell his side of the story. So that's really consistent with his beliefs from my understanding. Yep. Like he so doesn't shouldn't be talk, surprising. Yeah he doesn't talk like publicly about like the back end of his relationships no. I think unless he has like express 
public consent, like consent from that which person. Which is so. a, a thing he's always been consistent on. So in that way, like, it is what it is. Like, Andrew should have expected that. You know, but yes. from the perspective of wanting to hold people accountable, like, walking the walk, how right. do you, like – because it feels like you're saying I'm walking the walk as a Christian, but to some people hearing it, it might feel like you're not walking the true Christian walk. Like Andrew kept trying to say that, kept trying to poke holes in you and Nick's relationship. And I understand that perspective. Which is as fair. Like, yeah. yeah, I understand I mean, all the religious perspective. people always think no one. This is why there's like yeah. 37,000 denominations amongst Protestants. <laughs> like Andrew thinking I'm a heretic and me thinking yeah. Andrew a heretic is standard yeah. Christian. Like, no, like I think for atheists, they're like, oh, no. That means one of them must be wrong. So I go, or both of us are wrong. Like this is standard religious infighting. Like this happens yes. all the time. This how is do you... Sunni and Shia problems. Like yes, Bro. This is just yeah. So how do you how do you make peace with that? How do you make peace with the idea that like you're fighting your own brothers and sisters? Um, I actually think as a Christian, your job is to be more like if you look at like where Jesus was most harsh and critical, it was actually the Pharisees. Uh, he calls them raka. Of course, totally. So mm -hmm. raka is the is the Greek word for fool. And what it means specifically is godless fool, which is mm. interesting mm. because in the Sermon on the Mount, so to understand the Sermon on the Mount, it's like the culmination of months and months and months of everyone being like, Jesus, when are you going to like teach us what sin is? When are you going to teach yeah. us how to pray? When are you going to like teach us basically the new covenant? When are you going to lay out the facts, right? So we know how to act because again, Historically, they had a much more slightly like didactic law system, at least like you cannot do this, the ceremonial law and, and whatnot. Um, so they've been asking for months. And so finally he goes, all right, we're going to do it at Mount Sinai. So they get to Mount Sinai. And this is what the Mount of the Sermon is. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount is. It's really important. This is where the Beatitudes come from. Mm. This is like one of the most important things Jesus says in all of the Gospels. Um, mm -hmm. I think most theologists would agree with me. It's kind of a big deal. And he lists, it's... It's the funniest thing to read because Jesus, this is my favorite part about the Bible. Jesus is a literal fucking troll all the time. It's super funny. <laughs> so if you actually read through it, he lists a whole bunch of things. So you've got like the Beatitudes where it's like, you know, like the rich will be last. and The, like mm, the first will yeah. be last and the last will be first yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And then he starts listing in the case of murder. That's where he says, you know, if you even have hate towards your brother. He right. also says, be careful about calling others fools. For the like, yeah. it basically, it's like the fires of hell will be against you if you were wrong. So he's very, mm -hmm. and the word fool used there is raka. And you know what Jesus does later? He calls mm. the Pharisees raka. Mm. He breaks his own rule, apparently. So he lists a whole bunch of things. And the last line of the Sermon on the Mount is, so be perfect. That's yeah. the last line, which is a joke because yeah. it's not real. You can't right. be perfect. Right? right. So he's not saying don't strive towards these things. We all should. Good people want to strive towards good while realizing I'll never arrive at perfection. Yeah. But yeah. the issue. So I don't know. But I get really excited when I think about the Bible. But I only got excited about the Bible when I started like realizing that there's so much more to the Bible when you start engaging with it in the way that it was like actually originally written versus yeah. like the way that like especially like modern Protestants like want to read it. Yeah. Um, it's so much more funny, but yeah. Okay, thoughts. So I will say <clears throat> when – so things like this in religion actually do make me really excited because there is something to be said about, again, the Pharisees mm -hmm. being the sort of better than thou – attitude yeah they were the religious leaders they right were the they were leaders. the people right okay they were the heads like, of the church that's right uh, to understand the pharisees it's very important right. people know they're the heads of the church right the sadducees so, were the merchant class so there's this relationship people have with these idea of again leaders who get so big for their britches they forget the humility of christ right mm -hmm. and they're the humility of jesus is sort of something that i do aspire to sort of gain in inspiration from like i want to be i want to have humility i want to have grace i want to have all these things and i'll probably die on the journey to get it but like it is one of those things where there is this irony of like you know you know it's easier for a, what a, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven right like we are experiencing this really miss this big misunderstanding of what it even means to be godlike or a good person or or to be well-intentioned and i think a lot of the time people get lost in the sauce of i'm acting correctly i look correctly it am perceived correctly but in your heart of hearts you know the sin you're committing you know the relationship you're having and i think that does coincide with when we're judging people 
And I always try, again, like humans getting human is like a saying that helps you as an individual not freak out when you see the world doing things that make you feel icky. It's like, hold on. They're being very human and they're doing a very human thing. Sin is human, right? Murdering is human. Raping is human. Everything we do is human because like humans are what they are. But then we can have a relationship with being, I think if you took it religiously, more Christ-like, which is very not human in a way, even though he came to be like us, it's not. But if you're a secularist like I am, I would say you're striving to be better than even your base monkey brain. You're striving Mm -hmm. to be better, but to also forgive yourself, to also realize other people are on their journey, to realize like I can't expect perfection out of the world. I can only ask that we try our best. And sometimes Mm -hmm. what the world is doing by default is their best, right? And so it can get frustrating, which is why, again, I preach very individualistic, you know, hope for the world because I don't know how to help groups of people (laughs) like I don't know what to do with them when they become a group they become a lot for me to handle but I think like Christ figures are the people who come to sort of save groups yeah right like we I don't think any of us were ever meant to save groups I think that's more for the either the mythology of Christ or the real reality of Christ and what he represents or a God could represent right? right so does that kind of coincide with sort of your I think very humble answer of like, I don't even, I'm doing my best. I'm not a leader, but like, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Like, is that your sort of comfort in knowing that your journey is just what it is? It's not perfect. And Mm -hmm. so to expect you to be perfect, like I think a lot of people who are criticizing you are, is sort of missing the point. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's this piece of like, it's kind of like, uh, like almost like the Jungian like shadow work. It's like realizing like, Cause like yep. when I'm saying like, I'm just not perfect. I'm not trying to be like, hashtag, like, don't come at me. Right, so it's like right, at right. the end of the day, especially as a, since I'm a Christian as well, I'm accountable for my sin, right? Mm. Every bit of sin that I do is the one pinning Christ to the cross. Every sin that I personally do makes me fall short. Mm. And I'm, I don't want to, unlike a lot of like, kind of like limpers Christians, I don't want to run away from that. I take full responsibility. So people being like hard on me, if I like, espouse these values and I don't live up to them. I think you're super fair, right? When I fail mm. my own ethical system. The part that's frustrating to me, to be honest, in all of this is like, when I'm saying like, uh, hashtag I'm not perfect. The reason I'm not saying I'm a teacher is like, it's a, I'm saying this, there's a religious connotation to what I'm saying here. So if you're aware of like what the word, the Greek word teacher means and right. like how Jesus talks about like the role and responsibility, this is why he was so hard on the Pharisees specifically. Right. I'm not a teacher explicitly because like, I don't believe that I have enough of the answers in any way that I would want people to look at me and be like, that's what I, that's what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to point you to like Bart Ehrman long before I'm going to point you to me. Mm -hmm. Um, There's much better religious scholars. So my biggest frustration in this has been mostly, I understand Protestants hating what I'm saying. That's, I, that's expected. And it totally makes sense because I'm basically denying like sola scriptura, for example. Um, And I'm not a fundamentalist, which most Mm -hmm. are. It's really frustrating to have atheists telling me that I ne- I can't have this view, that essentially I must have like a moral absolutism because mm-hmm. I'm Christian. And it's like, well, no, that's just like what some Protestants do because they're cringe. Like, I just am a moral relativist because essentially I believe God is. I believe God's a moral relativist mm-hmm. because God can be whatever the fuck he wants. God gets to say what's good. I believe that God seems to be a bit of a moral relativist. And therefore, I operate under that and try to pursue what I think God is. That's so interesting because I grew up under, from my understanding of how I was raised Catholic, like anyone could get into heaven because God is the ultimate judge, right? But I also grew up in a very judgmental home, meaning like my parents would look at people and be like, like my parents were afraid that three of their kids were queer and they would go to hell because they were gay. And I was like, let God make that decision for me because I'm not afraid. If God is as lovely as you say he is, then I will die and God will judge my soul and he will know that all the intentions of my heart. But I'm also confirmed and I'm baptized. And so the problem with being confirmed and baptized is like the sin is greater on me if I don't ever come back to the church because I knew, I know. But the problem is, is like when I was 15 years old and going to get confirmed, I asked my mom, I was like, don't confirm me. I'm doubting now. I'm doubting. And I officially left the church at 19. So there's even like controversy in my own home. Like some of our priest friends are like, well, technically she was coerced into confirming so we could even have a conversation about that why are we letting children like confirm themselves into one of the greatest sins right and so there's a lot of conversation around this but ultimately like i i i'm pretty sure god doesn't exist but if he does then i am sure he will be as forgiving as i have heard him to be 
and I'm okay living yeah. with that consequence, right? But I also understand that this fear people have is like the weight of the sin that I am collecting could be too big to bargain with God. That's not how you you don't bargain with God, but like it could be too big at that point. But I don't know it's if I believe like, that you do bargain with God. Like that's what that's what the do story you? of Jacob is. Yeah, the story of Jacob. He like wrestles with Christ essentially and breaks mm. his hip. Because like Christ yeah. was demanding of something of him, and Jacob was like, "No, I don't want to." Right. And so like, well, that's is you that see people is negotiating that with God all the time. I, no, I don't okay, know. bargain. When I think of bargaining, I kind of think of um trying to upsell God, <laughs> like trying to trick okay, God. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, I don't think <laughs> you can. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. But obviously, you can't yeah. Trick him, but yeah, you, can you can't negotiate. trick him, but you can negotiate. Yeah. yeah, actually, um, one of the things that Catholics always taught me is like God doesn't send people to hell who don't want to go there, and I think something about that's really comforting because I do think there are some people. Like, I have a theory that maybe, like, very few people are actually in hell. <laughs> and the ones that are might even feel, like, comfort in that choice in some way. And I wonder what that could look like to feel comfort in it. But at the same time, I, obviously, I don't know what version of hell everyone's thinking about. But, like, I know some people who are really afraid of it, right? Because it sounds yeah. terrifying. But to mm -hmm. me as a Nashing kid. Gnashing teeth, fire. All awful. of it just sounds awful. But, like, honestly, I get stressed thinking about heaven because, like, some people are like, you're going to sing to God every day. I'm like, <laughs> Lord, I just want to die. I'm so tired. But then, of course, if I reached heaven, I'd probably be happy. But it's one of those things, again, it's like, what are we really imagining with our little human brain, this concept of what might or could be true, right? Yeah, that's why I I'm so uninterested in divination. When people are mm. like, what do you think about heaven and hell? I'm like, I don't fucking care. It's like asking me what I think about angels. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Why would, I ever care? Why would I ever care about something I could literally on this earth never know about? I don't care. Interesting. No, because you guys don't have like saints or anything, right? So like Catholics have as a Protestant. As a Protestant, Catholics have saints. Yeah, we do, and like we have like like living saints, like people who have like interacted with people who recently died, like Padre Pio, or people who claim to have like basically like superpowers, right? Like they need Pio to have, I think, three confirmed different yes, types miracles. of miracles. Right. Yeah. Right. And I've, I even touched like I've touched the. We know they're going to heaven. We like right. that's why they're saints. Saints are just right. people that were like, especially for Catholics, because you guys believe in purgatory and sanctifying grace. Right, right, right. We're like, right. these guys are for sure in heaven. Yeah. Right, right, right. And uh, they were saints after, right? The miracles and after they were, but it's like they, people could have known them. Like my, you know, the um, Fatima story about the dancing of the sun? Do you know that story about the three kids who saw Mother Mary? Well, my brother's gone and like seen the nun who was like a part of those three kids. And I think mm -hmm. about that. I'm like, oh, you've like, you've had a, like a, She's a cloister nun, so she's behind the nunnery. She doesn't come out or see the world anymore. But it's like, oh, you've, like, touched history, like, Catholic history. Um, I've touched the relics of saints. Like, I've gone – I've done all the Catholic stuff. But, like, you've touched – there's something there. And in the group, it feels really powerful. It feels, like, really moving in the same way I feel when I'm in a group of people in general. But it is mm – -hmm. You know, there's something to be said about how these things do impact us long term and whether or not we leave the church or not. It's still a question of who am I, what are my morals, and how do I maintain myself as a good person, right? right. doesn't matter that I'm secular. I'm still attempting to be a good person. Right. And I think that that journey is just so individualistic. Can you be a part of a religion and still have an individual journey that doesn't feel like there's pressure from a community? Mm, maybe re ask me the question. I don't know if I'm understanding it. You're having a personal relationship with Jesus and your your journey with yeah. Christ, but your community mm -hmm. might be upset with you. Yeah. At what sure. point does your community <laughs> have the Protestant. right? At what point do you have to then change your mind and adhere to your community? Um, I think never. Uh, to be ah. honest, I think what I what I need to do is first of all, if I go into like another, like if I go into like a Protestant space, I'm going to be like respectful of them obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um uh because the like a lot of i think sw is even like screaming about how like i'm really harsh on christians well, i'm only mm -hmm. really harsh on christians a who are usually using their rel religiosity to beat non-christians over the head and condemn them i'm very harsh on those christians for very yeah. good reasons mm -hmm. right i think they're doing a very dangerous game um and they're like representing my god but like in general i'm pretty like normal person if i interact with other religious people i'm going to be like decently respectful the issue is what I need to do is essentially like how I view it is I try not to assume that I'm wiser than like a whole collection and body of people. So like when there's like major pastors who disagree with me, I like take it pretty seriously. Mm. I really do think about it, right? Like so many people are like, you know, keep saying that I don't know my theology and it's like there's limitless amounts of theology to know. I'm not mm. a theological scholar. 
but I know my theology quite well. I'm mm-hmm. definitely not ungrounded. And so what I mostly do is I try to engage and wrestle with my community. I ask and pose questions. I talk with them about it, but I don't really see any biblical standard of saying like everyone in the community must have believed in the exact same things. Um, I don't really see that. There's the uh, there's a couple things that you kind of all have to agree in to be a Christian, basically, which is mm. going to be like the Apostles Creed, basically. Yeah. Um, so Trinity, you know, virgin birth, these sorts of things. God died on the cross, uh, like the basics. Resurrection? Resurrection, yeah. Okay. I think that's all the, I mean, I can pull it up. Okay. Uh, God, Trinity, yeah, crucified, died, descended to hell, rose, Holy okay. Spirit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that sort of okay. stuff. Okay, okay. Right. Um, okay. So mm-hmm. I do my best to like listen to that, but um, I don't really see any standard of Christian biblical evidence of saying you have to agree wholeheartedly. But I do my best to be really cautious of like when I disagree with Protestants. Well, the area I disagree in, lots of Catholic theologians agree with me. It's not like I'm making up. Like everyone's like, oh, you're just making up your own theology. I'm literally not. I'm mostly borrowing dominantly Catholic theology. I'm just a Protestant because I'm protesting the Catholic Church. Yeah, um, well, I'm it's not making up a bunch of this shit. Which Catholics though? Because like you're you're you 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 and Destiny were saying things that I had never heard from my Catholic bubble, and I was just like, interesting. What Catholic bubble is this? Because there's different kinds of Catholics. Is it Roman yes. Catholicism? Uh, I mean, technically, you're all considered under the one Church, but right. obviously, we right. know that there's right. schism. So like. I, sus- I don't know what Destiny grew up in. The form of Catholics that I tend to agree with is going to be like certain popes uh, and mm-hmm. the way that they've like read and interpreted the Bible. So a lot of where, where like some of my theology comes from is like certain readings of like popes. Um, Augustine's like a classic. So yep, just a number yep. of like very notable Catholic scholars rather than mm-hmm. like Catholics at large. Like I, okay, I wouldn't okay. have like a specific like diocese that I like point to that's alive okay. right now. And be okay, like, fair, everything fair, he fair. says is what I think. Yeah. Fair, fair. Okay, so I'm curious. Hold on. Let me think. Okay, you said... Hold on. Oh, God, girl. So many good things. And you're good <laughs> on spoons, right? I'm good. Good. Okay. Don't have to think the same. Referencing other Catholic theologians. Okay. Oh, fuck. What was I going to ask? I need a notebook. Oh, you said something and it made me go, okay, have to ask about all these things. Do you have to believe certain things? Oh, wait. Oh, oh, I got it. Okay. So, okay. In terms of, and one thing that stood out to me in the conversation you were having on that panel was about like, um, I was thinking about politics and religion. And I was thinking, how does Kyla balance voting versus her religious beliefs? Like, do you vote the way your religion, that coincides with your religion? Uh, So I would only vote that would coincide with my religion specifically if there was something societally that was trying to, so one thing that I would be against my Mm -hmm. society in is if society tried to force me to do something that I think is a sin. So Ah. if I think, for example, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So if I was in a society that said that I had to blaspheme the Holy Spirit, I would act against my society. I would vote against my society. So if my society tries to force me to do what I believe is like personally sinful, Mm. I'll reject it. Mm. Other than that, uh, I kind of like our society. I think North America's done like a pretty good job. We've got like a pretty good world. There's a reason people are immigrating. I think it's mostly like it's not perfect. So I try to think about like what does our society want and what do I think God would want to see in our society? I think like for the most part, like lessening, lessening suffering, seeing people be happy and allowing people to like have the capacity to wrestle as much as possible towards like truth and free will. Mm-hmm. And so I try to like vote align that. So do I vote like religiously? Kind of. Um, but I'm very, very, very opposed to the merging of church and state. Um, mm. So any sort of person that's coming into roles, for example, that's Christian and also trying to like put forward distinctly Christian policy, I'd actually probably be voting against. I'm very opposed to the merging of church Kay. and state. This is weird, Kyla. I know. This is very <laughs> different. I was literally just at church with my parents. I went for Mother's Day because I'm a good daughter and that's what I get my mom every year. And I went to church with her and literally before the mass even started, not only were they fucking talking about politics and like telling us how to vote that year. And I was like, this is not how this is supposed to work, sir. Like literally mentioning like certain bills. This you have to vote this way. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, very Catholic of them. They they, they'll tax the churches. Anyways, it's not. It's fine. So this is what I grew up with. I grew up with 
you vote, you th- like you want the world to be like you. Like my own parents will vote against my legal rights. They're anti they're pro life, right? They're anti LGBT. They're pro like all mm-hmm. the DeSantis craziness happening in Florida. And they don't care that three of their kids are going to be impacted negatively or even more than that, right? Because to them, they have to vote according to their faith. Now, funny enough, some of my Catholic, some of my parents' Catholic friends always tell them, like, you need to be anti-death penalty as well, because that's not pro-life to be pro-death penalty, right? So of yeah. course everyone picks and chooses like what they're comfortable with. But how do you relate or at least see yourself in con- contra- con- contrast to those other religious people who are like, hey, you need to vote to make the world more like us? Uh, I would say read your book. Uh. <laughs> uh, but like more specifically, I would look at like verses like render to Caesar what is Caesar's, mm-hmm. render to God what mm-hmm. is God's. I would yep. look at the fact that the reason the Jewish people wanted to kill Jesus is because he refused to be political. He yeah. refused to be because they believed in a king, right? Right. And they right. were, it was a political king to throw off Roman occupation. And right. Jesus said, no, he rejected that fully. And I'd say like, that example to me is strongly suggestive of a separation of church and state. Like in no way did Jesus like walk around and try to like throw off the Roman occupation or say F you to Caesar or like do anything, even though the Romans were occupying and oppressing the Jewish people. This is why this mm. is a large reason cited by Jewish people for killing him uh, is that they believed he was a false Messiah because he like mm. wasn't fulfilling the prophecy. Um, so I don't know. Like to me, I, I just... I guess I, I'm like, I guess find it biblically for me, like where God says explicitly, you must vote to force non-Christians to follow your law. Um, yeah. I guess find it. I, I just don't see it. Yeah. Um, I think again, Jesus is like a really good example of this. It's so interesting. Like a big part of me obviously is like a queer person is excited that religion could forgive my French modernize and become sort of like, um, able to live amongst the secularists and vice versa with each other. And I, at the same time, have a hard time believing that someone could, not you, someone, just someone could believe in like the God who has this particular sect of religion or beliefs and then not want to do everything in their power to make sure the world is like on the up and up. Unless, of course, they're thinking like, well, at least I'm going to heaven. Does that make sense? Like, how do you like this is a huge struggle, I think, a lot um, amongst a lot of us is like, a, again, a part of me is like, wow, those staunch Islamists, those staunch like Catholics, like, damn, they're kind of crazy, but like they really believe. And then mm-hmm. at the same time, they're so like they're the bane of society. <laughs> yeah. Um, everyone hates them and it makes people like spit at the name of Christ. So, yeah, um, that's concerning to me. Uh, yeah. It's like not we're supposed to be doing um for example if we view like non-christian people as essentially like the lepers the prostitutes the tax Mm -hmm. collectors like the Mm -hmm. heathens essentially Mm -hmm. well they really liked jesus in fact who didn't like jesus the religious people didn't like jesus yeah so um i'm really comfortable with religious people disliking me um that's okay i'm just doing my best to keep like as honest as i can about like my faith as possible and if i'm wrong that's on me right yeah for sure and I'm doing my best to not be wrong. So I guess uh, maybe I'm not answering. I don't think I'm answering your question. No, I think you are. I think it's hard to. I'm going to be real. I think it's very hard when people say that they're interested in like the objective truth. When we're sitting here saying we want big T truth, we want to figure out what's real. We want to tear apart anyone and everything and every, every you. We want to tear about you for even going your own way. Because then we're like, ha, then this thing that she says she believes can't be real because she's going her own way and she's different than the rest of them and the rest of them are. And so I think there's something in us that makes us go like, why do you believe that? I don't get it. Why aren't you doing the thing? Why aren't you performing the thing so we know what you are? Why aren't you condemning me for being a sinner? (laughs) Yeah, like condemn me. Stop liking my OF pictures, Kyla. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, first of all, I do condemn you. I call people DGENs and heathens all the time. It's just like with love because it's like part of this is about how you view salvation. Do mm. I think people's salvation is on my shoulder or God's? Well, I think fundamentally salvation is a miracle of God. So oh. my, the best I can do is try to live and act according to God. I answer questions about my faith as people ask, and I always own mm. that I'm a Christian. I don't hide it, right? That's yeah. like my evangelism. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. At the end of the day, I actually think the thing that like changes hearts, souls, and minds is God. Um, but see, so you do want to change my heart, mind, and soul. No, I want God to. Mm. 
Do I have to stop being like, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, how much of my life would I have to change to love God you and, and to come God. to God? Mm, so are you saying I can be an OnlyFans creator and a Christian? Uh, possibly. I'm definitely agnostic about it. Mm, see, that's where people, I think, want a clear answer. Like, what are the rules? Right. But then why can't you give us the rules? Why call because yourself a Christian? That's not how the Bible is written. I just, mm. I, beca because the book, I don't know, because I read the book. <laughs> like, here's, okay, first yeah. of all, we need to understand that the Old Testament is an Eastern historical writing, ancient Eastern. Mm -hmm. They mythologized history. Mm. They never wrote didactic history, ever. Mm. If you want a didactic Abrahamic religion, become Muslim. Genuinely, they yeah. have clear political policies. They're much more didactic, didactic and like telling you like do X and don't do X, right? In the case of like Old Testament, what you have is mythologized history, right? Completely. This is why tons of archaeology disagrees with findings of the Bible, right? Mm. It's because it's mythologized and it's oftentimes updated to like teach the people of the time about what's going on, like Egypt. Egypt, in many ways, mostly just represents large civilization that can be oppressive. But like, if you actually look at the history of like, it's even pre-Hebrew, um, but like any sort of like, kind of like Semite people in Egypt, there's not really good evidence that they were slaves. And most of the slaves in Egypt weren't slaves in the way described in the Bible. Mm. What do you do with that? Does that just mean the Bible is all made up? Well, no, it's, mm. it's mythologized history, right? Like, which is so frustrating. It's so frustrating where it's like, these are all mythologized. So they're like, is it true or false? And it's like, well, it's kind of in between this. Mm, like, mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you. Go read like a bunch of mythologized history. Yeah. Like they're all pretty similar in like ancient Eastern traditions of like writing this way. When yeah. we're talking about New Testament stuff, it's got a bit more of a Western writing to it. But what you have is a collection of gospels and then you have letters for the most part. And then you have revelations, depending on the canonization, obviously, if you include like Maccabees or not. You have a bunch of letters. The letters are specifically written to very specific groups at a mm -hmm. point in time, like the yeah. Corinthians at the time yeah. Paul was writing to them. It's really weird to read, even though he's more didactic there, it's weird to read it and go, okay, well, that's just like the new covenant. When you've got the Sermon on the Mount, where God lists all of these like vague principles and then says, be perfect. And then yeah. goes on to break a number of his principles, right? Yeah. So you're like, what well, did Jesus sin? Well, no, probably not. It's probably way more complicated because just to be clear, I believe, in an actual infinite divine God, which means I don't think that people can just like understand him simply, right? I think you have to do a lot of work mm. to try to figure it out, which is why I'm saying I could be wrong, but I'm doing yeah. my damnedest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I vibe with I'm that. asking of other Christians, which yeah. is why when other Christians, so other Christians will say, absolutely, doing porn is wrong as a Christian. I think there's good reason why they're saying that. The issue is I haven't... To be honest, I don't want to do porn. So I've just mm. never really looked into it seriously, Fair. which is why I'm kind of agnostic. I'm like, I haven't really looked into it. I haven't thought about it. I think it's reasonable that many conclude that it is. I also yeah. think that it's possible that somebody could be like, actually, I did the theological work here and here and here. And I genuinely believe that in this modern day context, the way that OnlyFans is the fact that there's very minimal harm and blah, blah, blah. And it's so different that like God wasn't really talking about OnlyFans. He was mm. talking about like ancient, ancient Hebrewic prostitution and that they're actually yeah. different things it's possible i just like personally don't care that much because i i'm not interested in porn in any way yeah. so I, I haven't really thought about it i would i for unreligious reasons i have no interest in doing porn so yeah, yeah. no that's fair that's okay, why i'm I agnostic but it could be wrong could be wrong right now i'm curious i think earlier you referenced how jesus hung out with the text collectors and um the prostitutes and when i was raised thinking about it. I was told to think about it like Jesus said to them, I see you. You're a person. I value you. Your humanity isn't lost to me. You're still a wonderful part of society, but I need you to stop what you're doing and follow me. I want you to stop whoring, stop being a corrupt tax collector, stop being these and follow me. So mm -hmm. when we say like Jesus was cool, he hung out with prostitutes, we don't really mean God is pro-prostitution. We mean that God doesn't devalue the humanity in an individual because they are in a line of work that is sort of sinful. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Okay. Now, one of the things that I do often on the internet is I often will say like, 
Sneeko and all these like red pill guys who are like, I'm Muslim. And I'm like, you're not Muslim. You couldn't be Muslim if they paid you a billion dollars. You're so undisciplined. Like there's no way they could be Muslim. Like you have to do so many things. You have to be so dedicated to be a real Islamist. Like you have to really care about Islam and God and like all these things. And when I do that, do you think that that is an accurate thing to be able to say about somebody? Like if I see a vegan eating pork, can I be like, okay, not really a vegan, right? Or do you feel like that's even not appropriate? Or do you think there is such a thing as being able to say like, that's not a real Christian, that's a grifter? You can. Okay. This is calling them Raqqa. So this is calling them Uh... Raqqa. So you can, Jesus did, he called the Pharisees Raqqa. But God damn, be careful. Because Mm -hmm. Jesus also says, what do you need to do to be a Christian? He said, at least be better better than the Pharisees. <laughs> that was what Jesus said, which is like, mm-hmm. damn, right? He calls mm-hmm. them Raqqa. He says that blood is on their hands. So you can call people not of their faith, mm-hmm. but he cautions you, be really, really careful, which is why like, I, I do my best. Like, I might say somebody's being heretical, but that doesn't mean that they're not Christian. It just means that mm-hmm. I believe that like their theology is unsound, right? So like SW, the guy who's like blowing up me in your comments, he thinks I'm a heretic, right? Yeah. He, prob- he shouldn't be saying that I'm not a Christian though. That's fucking dangerous. Him saying that is worse than any heresy that I'm saying. Mm-mm. Like it's very explicitly saying. So I try my best not to comment too much on like the s- salvation stance of people. Yeah. Um, but you can. Um, I'm not like disposed towards doing that just because again there's such a cautionary note in the yeah in the sermon on the mount about it but i will say and i want to explain this in a way that maybe if if so anyone's confused uh, and kyla tell me if i'm wrong on how i'm going to explain this but like when i hear you say not to do that what i'm hearing is like look dudes life is a journey and sometimes people have a relationship with god in which like they're not going to church every sunday and they're not involved in the community and like they're not sure what to do but they are a believer they're just having a moment or maybe they are going to church and they do believe but they're not the most perfect whatever that means or maybe so to say that they're not a christian is to kind of take away their opportunity to even have a deeper relationship with christ because to be a christian is just to say like i believe in christ right mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Or to believe in the Apostles' Creed, technically. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when we're having this like judgment call on people, I think it's really about us. My theory is that I'm really saying like I don't feel like you're a Christian in the way that I understand Christianity. You're not a Muslim the way I understand Islam. So I'm not. I don't know how to engage with you often mm-hmm. because usually what I'm doing, maybe my neurodivergent brain does this, but like I'm usually trying to figure out like who are you? How should I talk to you? What are the rules of this conversation? What right. do I have to say to not like get kicked out of the group because like my real opinion might not sound kosher? Like what am I supposed to say? So when people say like I'm a Christian, I go okay. Don't cuss in front of them. Don't mention sex work. Don't show yeah. my titties. <laughs> you know don't bring up gays like don't talk about homosexuality at all and then when i hear kyla saying fuck on stream i'm like what the fuck (laughs) and like she's a gay brother what evangelism (laughs) most christians can do is be willing to swear yeah yeah actually i i I think in catholicism if i'm not mistaken it's not actually a sin to cuss it's a sin to curse and so you have to be very you know careful there taking the lord's name in vain is right something that like to be honest i still do it but Mm -hmm. i would agree i'm i'm probably shouldn't like that's mm-hmm. actually more serious but that's mm-hmm. again because sin is probably some mixture of offending god and uh like doing things that you know to be wrong and doing yeah. them anyways right so like probably saying like the lord's name invade is like bordering on i'm risking offending god so i should definitely mm-hmm. be more cautious so i definitely like mess up there because i i mm-hmm. do use the lord's name in vain and that's probably mm-hmm. wrong but like cursing and words and stuff like that i don't know i just don't care about them that much yeah okay so here's a question i've been wanting to ask you and i again please don't take offense to it i was just curious i don't know if you could almost ever offend me unless okay, you basically said you're a dumb fuck there's no way you're a christian and i know your religion better than you do and i'd be like nah <laughs> that's probably nah. not true <laughs> i've been an atheist so long i barely remember catholicism at this point it's so bad okay so i am curious do you think in five years time you will still be a christian Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Why I would say that I'm a very, that? very, I would say I'm a very, very mature Christian at this point. I've kind of like wrestled through, I think, some of the biggest stuff that probably would have made me lose my faith. Mm. Things like suffering, um, like some really big questions. I was a fundamentalist whose yeah. brother came out gay. Yeah. Um, and I watched the church throw him away uh, yeah. like garbage um, and almost lost my faith a couple of times and kind of came back to it so like very unlikely um Mm. 
Yeah. And you like, this is the biggest issue. I understand people thinking that I'm like a LARPing, empty, untheologically taught Christian, mm. which in fairness, most Christians don't know their theology very well. Which Obviously is not. not. Yeah. Which is fine. They it's not the end world. It's really hard. It's really mm. complicated. That is not true about me. Mm. I am not a scholar. There are things right. I might be wrong about. And there are things that I haven't looked into, like the porn question. But I have looked a lot into my book. Yeah. I know a lot about my religion, my church history. I know quite a bit about what's going on. So um, it would take like maybe like a massive brain injury. I feel like a brain injury. Mm. Like, who knows? I'm not sure. But like aside from like some sort of like divine interventionism, I just don't see it at this point because of like how grounded my faith is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look, people always ask me, um, how can you kind of predict the future of what people will do? And it's like, well, some people like my parents, like I don't even I'm trying to think of what scenario would happen where they would lose their faith. They've been challenged time and time again. They've gone through their whole like, oh, I'm not going to go to church stage. My dad even had like a depressive two years when I came out as gay and like one of his favorite Catholic priests left the church. And like he was like, oh, my God, my ch everything's falling apart. Like, what? Where, my, where is my God? He's a and like my parents have been challenged and challenged and challenged and challenged and always come back to the faith stronger and stronger every time. Right. Mm -hmm. And they love their faith. I just couldn't imagine a scenario in which they are not Catholic and like in love with Christ. Right. But that doesn't mean it couldn't happen. It just means like the probability of it would be so weird because, again, they really think this is objective. They really think Christ is a real everything. Everything is real from top to bottom, right? Mm -hmm. But people will say like, how do you know that? Maybe they'll change one day. And I'm like, I'm not hoping for them to change, kids. Like that's not the point. If human's going to human is like, no, this is their journey. It is not my job to wish my parents would be atheists. Like what good would that do? Yeah. Like not only have we been able to have good relationships now that we've gone older, not only are they so supportive of this wedding, they sent us a very generous gift. They Aww. just couldn't come. Like they just can't come. But my mom is texting me every day like, what are you going to do for your hair? What are you going to do for your makeup? Like, do you need help with anything? Can I help in any? Like she's she's there. They just can't show up to the ceremony because it doesn't coincide with their God. And I'm like, you know what? Honestly, I can live in that world. I could do it. Yeah. Right. Now it helps that I'm marrying a man. If I was marrying a girl, there would be no <laughs> interaction. But it, it's okay. So my younger siblings are going to have it a lot harder than I will. But you know what I mean? I'll take it. I'll take it for a win because it's not my job to hope that people change to make me more comfortable. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess I wanted to ask you that question because I'm not going to lie. I'm going to make a bet. Mm -hmm. I am not sure if you'll be a Christian in five years. And I am so eager to know you for many, many years so I can find out where your journey ends up going. But I don't know yet. After hearing you talk now, I'm, I was initially going to say you won't be a Christian in five years. I'll be honest. But hearing you today, now I'm like, oh, OK, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, that's exciting. And I'm very excited to see where we are in five years because I think – more than anything, you'll be a happier person, whether it's with Christ or not. But honestly, you obviously have a deep relationship with your relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm not here to argue that. And I don't want you to be an atheist. Like, what you like my OnlyFans pictures? We're good, girl. We good, girl. <laughs> like, we don't have any conflicts. So I guess for you, how does that feel hearing that? Do you worry that people are like um, hoping you become an atheist or hoping you become more Christian? Or do you get frustrated that people are thinking about your relationship with Christ? Really? Uh, yeah. Like no more than pe like people like being weird and thinking about my relationship with Nick. To be honest, <laughs> like there's some people hoping I get a divorce and whatnot. Stop! Uh, Those people are so negative. What horrible energy to have in the universe to wish a divorce on somebody. Well, I would argue the same about like a falling out of faith. Like I, I hope Ugh. most people would just hope that I like continue to find happiness and truth. Like, yes. Whatever pathway that takes me. Uh, yes. It's not surprising to me that people assume that I'm going to fall out. I think the most common response I saw on like the DGG is being like, "She sounded just like me." When right before I became an atheist, and I'm just like, I, I guess I want to be cautious about this one, but I think I've done a lot of the work that most that causes most people to become atheist, and I've mm -hmm. kind of like overcome that hurdle. Um, I think if I was gonna fall away from my faith, I would have done so at like 21 to 22. That was like my biggest uh, kind of existential question of faith. Yeah, um, and I like was in a philosophy course with an ex-Baptist preacher who was the philosophy teacher, actually. So he was atheistic, um, but kind of like begrudgingly so. Mm. He was a weird guy. He's like, well, I just wish I could be Christian, which was a very interesting. He like loved 
He yeah. loved the Bible and he loved Christianity. He just like couldn't. Yeah. So him and I had like uh, some of the like, it was like crazy. The course was so perfect. It was like every question, because we had to answer like these questions to have debates in class. Every question, because it was like a basic philosophy course, every question we had to answer was like almost perfectly aligned with like what I was wrestling with, with mm. my faith. And then my term paper was actually a question we could do, we could answer like a couple of different essays. So I chose A Will to Believe by William James, which is necessarily to some degree about faith. Yeah. Um, and I wrote this paper, got 100%, it's an excellent paper. Um, and I think like that course, you know, obviously I would say, I think God like put that course in my life uh, that allowed me to like kind of like go from the bottom up. Um, and then through my undergrad, I actually intentionally took as many of like the optional courses that I can take. Yeah. It's like doesn't do a lot of religion stuff and the religion stuff that does is like super woo woo and weird. And I don't like yeah. it, but I took a bunch of like comparative literature and like world religion classes, anything that I could to learn like tons. And I was always being taught by like Baptist teachers or like people who were like had a fair bit of religious history and either had stepped away or still believed in their God. But like uh, one of my favorite profs actually has a very similar faith to me, like believes in his go in God and is a Christian, but like has a really hard time with Protestantism and stuff like that, mm. but isn't a Catholic either. Um, I don't know. I just like, I just don't see it. Um, obviously anything could happen in the future, but I think sure. it's very unlikely. I'm kind of in, I think I'm at the piece of like basically being like, I'm really happy with my faith. It gives me so much that there's almost no motivation now. Um, yeah. I've gone through a lot of suffering. So I've already reconciled, like, I think a lot of things that cause like probably the most understandable cleave from God of like, how could a good God do awful things? Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know, like if I'm wrong, I'm going to die and it won't matter. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. I'm right, you know, I, maybe I'll get to go to heaven. If heaven exists, I don't really care about it. You know what? Same shit, girl. Like, same. <laughs> it makes me happy. It adds like so much value to my life. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, people, I guess, can speculate in the way they speculate anything. It doesn't really bother me. You know, I will say uh, if anyone else had said that to me, I would have doubted them. But given this is going to sound so weird, but given where you are on the Internet, if you were going to be an atheist, you would have done it during this stage somehow. The peer pressure is there. The like questioning is there. The community is there. Like you, you know what I mean? It would have been a great moment for you to leave the arms of Christ and join the arms of the agnostic atheist, like centrist, whatever people friends, on the Internet. All my friends in uni university were mostly neuroscience. Like I was mostly yeah. friends with like the neuroscience lab. So like if I ever had an incentive to not be a Christian, neuroscientists yeah. are not very pro-religion. So yeah. yeah, no, you're right. I think that is something that people do go through. Like we have moments in our life where we have that relationship with Christ and we lose it. And whether we get it back or form a different relationship with something else or, or whatever else, it is you will get to the point where I do think you reach your authentic, um, like I don't want to say like final form but your authentic final form that does not preclude you from gaining like change or wisdom or anything else but like you know the person that you're gonna be like the person yeah that's like kyla the christian and Brittany the whatever and like this is like the person and things could happen and the moon could shift and everything could change and everyone could have a different but there is like a a, a final form i think and so do you feel like in relation to christ like you are a Christian. You're not going to one day wake up and be Muslim. You're going to one day be Mormon. You're not going to one day wake up and be Catholic. You're not going to one day wake up and be. Part of why I have like a, not a deep, like by any means, but I've done a lot of classes on other religions intentionally because part of my like journey of like faith was going like, okay, do I even believe a God exists? Mm. Okay. Well, if I believe a God exists, what's its nature? Mm. I wasn't even assuming it was Christian. Right. So I like kind of like built my way up. Um, and to be honest, made my way back towards like a, a Judeo-Christian God because it was the one that like made the most sense to me. Like I'm like, if yeah. any God is real, this one probably makes the most sense. So yeah. I don't think I'm going to like wake up and be uh, Muslim. I'm not going to wake up and be Eastern Orthodox, I don't think. Yeah. Um, also, even statistically, let's be honest, most people, if they like do step away from their faith, they tend to do it younger. And if people are going to come back to their faith, they usually do it in their like 30s. And I'm almost yeah. 30. So just even statistically. Yeah, how, how old are you? I'm probably, I'm 29. So per, even yeah. statistically, I'm more likely to stay Christian. Yeah. With like aging yeah. and stuff. So yeah. No, that's so true. You've already passed like the teen. Like I always feel like people end up leaving religion between the ages of like 15 and 22. Yep. And they usually have like their big, like, I mean, I was 19, you know, most of my siblings mm -hmm. left around teens to early 20s. Um, mm -hmm. And the ones that didn't, like the ones that stayed, even when they had like a, a year or two away from Christ, they always came back by their late 20s and yep. they've never shifted away from it again. 
yeah. So I, I think even in that pattern, I'm probably following. So even again, assuming it's capital T true that my God is yeah. fake, none of it really exists. It's still even like just statistically probably unlikely at this point. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, I think that is all that I want us to talk to you about. And I really do appreciate you coming on. I know this is so personal. And the way you handled yourself uh, in the follow-up interview was so good. Like, you were so calm and collected that I knew you were going to be today. But I also I also do appreciate you answering the questions because it's really personal. Faith mm-hmm. is personal. Religion is personal. Beliefs are personal. And I just, um, just want to say, like, thanks. I really appreciate it, girly. Yeah, I've realized the only thing that actually really triggers me is when people are lying, specifically like about me. And Andrew's just a fucking liar. So I get really mad, like really, really mad. But as long as somebody's not lying to me and they're just like actually listening, they don't have to believe in me or agree with me. That's fine. I just don't really get upset. But the moment that I'm like, I'm pretty sure you're fucking lying Mm. uh, and you're lying about me, I get like, I need to work on this for sure. But there's something in me that gets like really really upset when I feel like people who especially should know better are lying about me. That really, really bothers me. Well, I mean, just certain people have bad faith energy. And I think Andrew C, I don't know him. That was my first time seeing him. I just felt like he was like, I couldn't tell if it was a shick or if he was playing a character or if like the smoking the cigar thing was part of the shit. Like I couldn't tell what he was doing. That's that's him. That's the, that's the thing. So yeah, I just, it felt like he was, yeah, going for you. And I was like, why are you, why are you going for Kyla? Like, just like ask a question and be a normal person. But I think like, I can't tell if he got caught up in the debate space. Like he got caught up, you know, you know, I don't really, know if that's it. I think I'm definitely a target for him and his wife, probably mm. in part because we're both Christian mm. and he's Eastern Orthodox. So he really disagrees with me on a bunch of stuff. And I make fun of Eastern Orthodox people all the time because I think it's the cringiest, cringiest Christian sect. Um, uh, it's mostly in like LARPs and giggles. Like, I don't care that much. I just right. like, yeah, Eastern Orthodoxy is like the silliest form mm. of Christianity to me. But like, I still think they're Christians, obviously. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I call I say Eastern Orthodox are Protestants that are LARPing and pretending that they're Catholics, and that really bothers them. <laughs> Yo, that's kind of fire, though. Wait, I get it's that. True. That's good. That's good. <laughs> it's actually so true. Like, wait, if you that's go into, so like, funny. Patriarchy and like their spiritual. That's pretty good. Like, yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that one like really triggers me, and he's definitely going after me because I think he he probably fundamentally thinks I'm Raka. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he actually specifically says I'm not a Christian. Uh, at least him and his wife do. And so I think they probably see me as like a heretic mm-hmm. who's like preaching a false narrative that's like trying to s- convince atheists to be liberal Christians, basically. Like I think he sees yeah. me as like the yeah. worst representation of faith, whereas he's, I mean, yeah. his name's Big Papa Fascist. He's a fundamental Christian who like justifies basically like white supremacy um, and like pretty intense hatred for like lgbtq under his faith oh my God. um and wants to establish like a theocracy like he oh yeah so we like fundamentally disagree religiously like anywhere and that's like where you're gonna oh. get like some of the biggest heat between two people obviously i did not know he was that extreme oh yeah he's really extreme whoa sir not even my parents are that extreme and i feel like they're pretty religious <laughs> like yeah. okay everybody relax here that's so funny that that again okay, again i think that just like is so interesting to watch people who fall under the same umbrella be so at odds with one another but it is what it is i mean we've seen it amongst the progressives i'm sh- of course it exists amongst the christians you know what i mean yeah human which is what you're you're witnessing was like shit slinging and like bad faith acting yeah yeah uh, right? yeah like he was just like looking for a dunk on me or on yeah. Justin. Yeah. Did so. this feel like good faith? Oh, yeah. Of course. It always is. Uh, right. I appreciate that. That's I think I like that's what that. I'm looking forward to, right? Because I, I get the whole time I was hearing Andrew, I was like, man, this guy's either bad faith or I'm crazy. Like, he feels icky. Well, it doesn't even make sense. He literally said that it's a sin for some people to smoke and not for others. Yeah, he I just, agrees with me. He agrees with me. Yeah. Like, the, the religion. Most, like, 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 most Christians will agree in, like, relativity. Relativi- relativi- of sin mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like some things can be sins for one person and not another yeah most yeah Christians just agree with this it's crazy. was he just holding you to like a very high standard because you are a christian on the internet you are saying you're a christian was he trying to hold you specifically to like the highest standard i think he just wants to trap me and like prove that mm. i'm like a dumb moron who doesn't know any what i'm talking would about. he That's- do you think he'd welcome you to converting like to his eastern orthodox yes yeah for you sure. Think he'd, mm, interesting. He feels not very welcoming. No, I I agree. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't feel that welcoming, bro. But you know, it yeah. is what it is. No, that makes um 
Yeah, that that conversation was really confusing to me. Though I will say, I do understand the narrative he's saying out loud, where he's like, "You're a, f you know, if you say like you're a fake Christian," I was like, "Yeah, I, I used to say things things like that to people too, because I wanted them to be exactly this, like a Catholic. Like you have to be very specifically this as a Catholic." But then I do take into account like people on our journey, bro. Some of them like don't know how to have a full relationship. But then what is a full relationship? Is that what the real is when you have a full relationship with Christ? But then why do you have to be Eastern Orthodox? Like that seems so strange considering like there is set like I, no. Why do you got to be Lutheran? Why do you got to be yeah. Baptist? Yeah. Right. This is and the the fact that all of these like tribes exist proves to be the necessary relativity of a lot of this stuff. Totally. Like, are we just Absolutely. saying that ninety percent of Christians are wrong and going to yeah. hell? Like, really? Yeah. I doubt that. It seems like there's different ways to interpret things, and some things can be true for you and not for others. Right. Mm. This is why Romans fourteen exists, and it's not Romans fourteen isn't even the only one. I just keep citing it because it's like it's just an entire chapter explicitly on this which is about yeah. you like rules for you don't necessarily apply to me sins for you are not necessarily my sin this is like this is standard this is why for example my dad who's a fundamentalist and sola scriptura believes that it's sinful for him to drink alcohol because in his past alcohol has led to like i won't get into his details but for him alcohol is like a no like even the yeah. consumption of it right yeah but he's very clear that it's not a sin to consume alcohol. It right. does seem like it's maybe arguable that like to be drunk is a sin. Sure. But uh, yeah, not not consuming alcohol. And he's very clear like this is my, we'll call it my cross to bury, to, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, carry, yeah. right? To so, bury, yeah, Christ to bury. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know why so many like Protestants fight me on this. It doesn't make sense. You all believe this. You just like haven't put words to this. And it makes you uncomfortable because it means like all of a sudden like you have to be like, maybe more open to like LGBTQ people is like probably my guess. Like, I don't know. Do you think, uh, like if people, do you follow 10 commandments? Uh, you, broadly. Yeah. But like probably like, yes. Um, okay. more like the golden rule of like Jesus is like love God. Okay. I heart soul man. Yeah. But yeah. I'm curious if it's like that where people are like, I want the 10 commandments and then you have to like follow them perfectly. And if you don't follow them perfectly, it feels like you don't really believe, which is again, a thought as a, that, that was the thought that brought me into atheism actually, which was like, if the religion doesn't give me the rules and make it really clear, like I can't believe it. Like I need things to be consistent, which is why I believe like everything's kind of subjective and we're all having different relationship with like what's good and what's bad and like what's good for me, what's good for you. But like maybe that's what people want. Cause that's what I used to want. I used to want a- yep. Black and white. That's why the Old Testament God is kind of fun because I was like, oh, he hates you. <laughs> Put below you. you know the rules. You know the rules. Then Jesus yeah. came around. He's like fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy love. And I was like, oh, now I'm confused what the rules are again. <laughs> you know, you say that about the Old oh, Testament God. Oh, wait, wait, God, Kyla. I knocked my ear out. Wait, wait, wait. Say oh. it again. I said, you say that about Old Testament God, but even if you look at the era of like the judges, the kings, and the priests, there were things listed as sins in like the judges' era that were suddenly not a sin. In like the era of priests so okay even old corrected. god was constantly like negotiating revising and updating and responding to <gasps> the mm -hmm. culture time and space and specifically the knowledge that the people had right yeah. if you know better do better that's, yeah that's a large portion now again yeah. i could be wrong that's my interpretation in reading through like the sermon on the mount and the way that christ talks about sin and even like the historical context of all these stories of like yeah the Okay, wait, then one more question on that, if you don't mind, right? You're good on sure. time for a second. Okay. I'm curious then, what is the, uh, what mechanism does God update now? Like, how does he update now his people? Because that's something that's always thrown me off, right? It's like, how do you have a relationship with God in 2023? How do we know the updated version of what is? Uh, exegesis, eisegesis, and like trying to listen to like uh, the argumentations and ramblings of like different Bible scholars. And then lots of prayer to like figure out it in between. So like exegesis would be like looking at the book. So anything that you believe there should be like something, but not being biblically deconstructivist, right? Like just finding a single verse that supports you, which is like Protestants do all the time, is not proof that you're right. Mm. Um, doing tons and tons and tons of prayer. And then I also do my best to like, hello, welcome back Hi, from doggo. the vet. She just came back from the vet. Streaming? Yeah, I'm streaming. It's Brittany. Hi, Hi, Nick. Nick. Hi. <laughs> um, and most of what I believe comes from the readings of different biblical scholars and like parsing it through and being like, okay, this makes sense. This feels right. When I think about the outcomes of this, it makes sense. This feels mm -hmm. right. And then when I pray about it, I have peace about it. And there's biblical 
stand points for what they're arguing. So I'm like kind of meeting all of these checks and then staying prayerful enough to be like, and if I'm wrong, hopefully God will like divine me. I'll stay yeah. like sensitive enough to the spirit that he'll outline it. Uh, yeah. And I think that's like what we've always been called to do the whole time. Um, it's what the Catholic church has been doing forever. It's just mm. the Catholic church is very big on like, not everyone needs to like do all this work, right? Which is why mm. a lot of people will just like listen to their pastor. And I think that that's yeah. like fine enough. I don't have a problem with people like, I don't want to do all the theological heavy lifting. I just want to like listen to my pastor and be happy enough. I think that's fine. Yeah. But you don't get to be mad at somebody who's like wanting to do more of the spiritual heavy lifting. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, girly. That's all I promise. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you for being here. Again, I love talking about religion, obviously, but I yeah. also don't want to shove it down people's throats ever. So uh, if, if I have follow-up to... questions, I will absolutely hit you up because I do. I mean, look, I'm an atheist now, but it was a part of my life for so long. It was very important to me. It's still a part of my extended family's life. So, or my direct family's life. So like, you know, it's, it might come up. It might come up. I would love to reach out to you again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, girly. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Listen yes, to of course. All have right. Good one. Bye. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun.